Rush. I'm Lindsay Tuckman. Let's head over now to Veronica De La Cruz with Scripps News Live. Veronica, maybe a Friday, but it's not a slow news day. No, it is a very, very busy news day, and happy Friday to you. <laughs> At least there's that, right, Lindsay? Thank you. So we continue to follow new developments in the biggest story of the day. Like Lindsay was just saying, very busy news day. The federal indictment of former President Trump is where we start. Former President Trump making history again. I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we'll fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. He's now the first ex-president in history to be federally indicted. The assertion which wound up being false that all of the documents in Donald Trump's possession had in fact been returned, that wound up not being the case. The former president and his attorneys promising a fight. He is innocent. I mean, everything about this case is absolutely rotten. Skies begin to clear in some cities as winds push hazardous smoke east, but we're not quite out of the woods just yet. There are currently 82 wildfires burning across the province. More than 1,000 personnel have been directly engaged in wildfire response efforts. And it's like Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. I could tell that they were exhausted, they were hungry. Uh, the kids were crying. It was it was a pretty tough situation. Amid all the negative headlines about migration, meet a man who opened his heart and home to a family in need. Scripps News Live begins right now. Former President Trump confirming that he was indicted again, and this time on federal charges brought by the Department of Justice. Welcome to Scripps News Live. Good to see you on this Friday. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Let's get you right to what we know right now about this indictment, which has not yet been made public. Last night, Trump attorney James Trusty, who resigned as Trump's counsel this morning, confirmed news of the seven-count indictment in an interview with CNN. He said the former president was indicted under the Espionage Act. And charges include conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and willful retention of national defense information. Last night on his True Social website, Trump posted that he'd been summoned to appear in a Miami federal court on Tuesday. Then he released a video statement proclaiming his innocence and ridiculed the special counsel investigation as political warfare. The way they're going to stop us is by using what's called warfare. And that's what it is. This is warfare for the law. And we can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Our country is going to hell. And they come after Donald Trump, weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI. We can't let this continue to go on. Scripps News has a team of political correspondents covering every angle of the indictment. Alex Miller live in New York to explain the case against the former president. We have Kevin Cirilli live in Washington. He's going to be breaking down how the special counsel built the case. Also, Abjoy Burnett is on Capitol Hill with more on what comes next for the Trump campaign and the president's supporters. Let's go ahead and begin right here with Scripps News national political correspondent Alex Miller in New York. So, Alex, break down these reported charges against the former president. We know so far that there are seven. Yeah, we know that there are seven charges, and despite the fact that the DOJ has not yet commented that these have not yet been unsealed, we are starting to learn from the former president's attorneys, now former attorneys, exactly what those charges look like. Now, these seven charges are much more serious than the 34 charges that he faced here in New York back in April. I want to go through them. They relate to the mishandling of classified documents. They include obstruction of justice, willful retention of national defense information, conspiracy, and making false statements. Now, these are related to the Espionage Act. The, this is a w more than 100-year-old law that has to, has to deal uh, with the criminalizing of sharing sensitive information. Now, CNN is reporting that there was a transcript from back in 2021 when Trump was here in the New York area at his golf course in Bedminster, that he was having a conversation where he not only shared classified material with people who seemed not to be privy to it, but also uh, that he knew that it was not classified, basically saying that he could have declassified it as president. Now, Scripps is part of an ongoing, uh, is part of a group of organizations who are trying to unseal these indictments so we can see exactly what they look like, how much information we're really going to get from them, or if we're really going to be learning everything on Tuesday. And what's curious in all of this, Alex, is that we have only heard about these charges from Trump's Truth Social website. Uh, outside of his initial 
tweet or you know truth is, is what they call it has he been reacting to the indictment what else has he been saying Oh, he has been incredibly active on his social media platform, Truth Social, even just a couple of minutes ago, announcing uh, that one of his aides has also been indicted. Again, the D Department of Justice has not yet confirmed this to us, but he called yesterday a dark day in America. Then he made a video. Listen to what he said. So I just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong, and we'll fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. We know that he is expected to go to court in Miami. If this looks anything like it did here in New York back in April, it is going to be somewhat of a circus in the days leading up, and especially on that day in particular back here in April. We had streets locked down. The building was locked down. Obviously, lots of extra security. The president himself needs to have his Secret Service protection. So there is a lot of work to be done to make sure that this can all be handled safely in just a couple of days. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle it at the venue there in Miami. Alex Miller reporting live for us. Alex is in New York. Alex, thanks. Uh, let's go ahead and take you back to the beginning right now. It's been 10 months, nearly to the day, since federal agents raided former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in South Florida. Now that search, according to the DOJ, turned up a trove of classified and other sensitive documents that had been improperly removed from the White House and then improperly stored at the former president's private home. In the 10 months since that search, the Department of Justice and later Special Counsel Jack Smith have been slowly building a case against the former president. And one major facet is testimony from members of Mr. Trump's inner circle. National political correspondent Kevin Cirilli picks up our team coverage live right now. So Kevin, some of former President Trump's closest allies have testified before the grand jury in this investigation. What more can you tell us on that front? Well, look, Veronica, I just spoke with a, a member of the January 6th Congressional Committee earlier this morning uh, who told me essentially that uh, Jack Smith has been able to utilize the grand jury in ways that Congress was unable to act when they were investigating Trump and, and his actions, particularly in that window uh, after he lost the election to President Biden and when he decided that he was going to have to give up the White House after fighting the legitimacy of the election itself. And let's pull up just whom uh, uh, Jack Smith and the grand jury have been able to call to testify, including uh, Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran, Jared Kushner, uh, the president's former president's son-in-law, an advisor to Trump who is also facing scrutiny for his international business dealings, including with Saudi Arabia, Ivanka Trump, the former president's eldest daughter, and ex-White House advisor, Mark Meadows, the White House, former White House chief of staff under President Trump, who has also now reportedly complied to testify, but including, and this is a big one, because this Mike Pence did not testify uh, before the January 6th Congressional Committee, and, and they wanted him to. But Pence, now the uh, former vice president, uh, testifying in this grand jury against the former commander-in-chief and now challenging him uh, for the Oval Office in 2024. Remarkable, unprecedented to have Trump uh, have that dynamic emerging now as a result of this unprecedented uh, 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 grand jury indictment. I also spoke, Veronica, with a source close to the Trump 2024 campaign earlier this morning who said that they are going to try to portray this as simply politics as a weaponization of the Department of Justice that can be deployed not just against Trump but also against any American and they're also pointing to a case back in the uh, mid uh, around 2015 uh, that Jack Smith brought against a Republican former governor of Virginia Bob McDonnell that ultimately made its way to the Supreme Court and the Republican governor won and this source said they are fully prepared to take this all the way to the Supreme Court. The biggest question is how does this impact Trump politically? He's going to be campaigning in Georgia tomorrow before making his way down the coast to Miami to face on Tuesday those charges. But the biggest question, will this impact swing voters? Earlier this morning, Bill Kristol, a Republican insider, had this to say over the air. Here he is. How much this evidence against Trump really does damage to not to his core base, but that's maybe 30% of the party, but to the 40 to 50% in between who are okay with Trump, they voted for Trump, twice for president. 
And if you pull up the front pages around the country, this is not just playing out at the Washington Post front page. This is all politics is local. And whether it's in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, it's a dominant A1 story. It's grabbing everyone's attention at the local level, Veronica, too. Yeah, it's grabbing everyone's attention. And, and the question is how much is challengers are going to be using this while they are on the campaign trail? Because, of course, the race for 2024 continues. You know, uh, former Vice President Mike Pence was in Iowa yesterday. Did he have anything to say about, about all of this? Well, he's been trying to, to, to say that, that he would be able to uh, uh, provide a, a level of conservative consistency that the policies of the previous administration that he helped uh, to carry out, while also trying to make a direct pitch to evangelical voters. But look, in the Hawkeye state, it's all about ethanol. And that's why Trump is trying to run on a record and differentiate himself from someone like a Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, uh, who the politics of ethanol are different uh, in, in uh, Florida than they are in Iowa. So it's a remarkable remarkable shift from 2016 in the sense, Veronica, that now Trump's running on a record. And in 2016, he didn't have that record. And it's why groups like the uh, Americans for Prosperity and the Club for Growth, both conservative groups, are investing so much right now in Iowa to try to get the messaging that would be able to derail Trump's political campaign. But right now, he's still the front runner. It is also interesting. Also interesting. We always appreciate you yeah. staying on top of it. Kevin Cirilli, live for us in Washington. Kevin, thank you. Again, former President Trump saying that he has been summoned to appear at a federal courthouse in Miami this coming Tuesday. But he has two major campaign events scheduled for this weekend. Saturday alone, he has a speech at the Georgia GOP State Convention followed by one at the North Carolina GOP State Convention. Scripps News political correspondent Ava Joy Burnett continues our team coverage now from Washington, where for now, President Trump's 2024 campaign will be proceeding with business as usual. It certainly is unprecedented, and we knew before yesterday, before word about this potential indictment came about, that the former president, Donald Trump, had events scheduled for this upcoming weekend. So it appears as if those campaign events are still set to go forward over the weekend. As for next week, Tuesday, you saw that the former president posted on social media that he will be going to court on Tuesday. So that will most likely be the initial appearance. And then there could be on that same day what we call an arraignment. An arraignment is where someone will enter a guilty or not guilty plea. And keep in mind that all of this is playing out around a person who needs Secret Service protection. So we saw this in New York City where there was coordination uh, between local officials and the Secret Service. So we're most likely to see that once again down there in the Southern District of Florida. I spoke with a former assistant U.S. attorney for that Southern District there and he kind of painted a picture for us of what this could potentially look like and here's more well they're making arrangements to ensure you know his safety and his appearance on tuesday afternoon here in miami you know so they're working out logistics of getting him here getting him into the courthouse we all saw what happened up in manhattan when that took place and so now this is going to be magnified tenfold um, all of the courtrooms are located in the courthouses in one small area in downtown miami uh, with very little ingress and egress, so I would expect some plans are, are being undertaken to, to deal with that. And, you know, uh, past that, it's going to be treated virtually like every other case. And Weinstein told me that this trial date could be set within 75 days. So it's just set. And then the trial date could possibly be within the fall or winter months. But keep in mind, everyone, that this is playing out when there could be um, debates in the summertime and then the first primaries that are coming up. The former president, he is saying that this will be uh, election interference. That's what his allies are also saying. I'm also hearing from some legal watchers who are saying this could all be drawn out and extend it a little bit more because there are also other cases that the former president could potentially have to deal with. Back to you. Our coverage of former President Trump's federal indictment will continue straight ahead. We're going to sit down with former federal prosecutor John Flannery to break down the details of this case. He's going to join us in just a few minutes at 12.15 p.m. Eastern. Also straight ahead, heavy smoke beginning to clear in some cities, but the health threat is not over yet. We're going to explain how long this dangerous smoke could linger. Also, a Florida woman accused of killing a young mother during a dispute admits to calling the victim's children the N-word. We'll have the startling details in a police report. Plus, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis defending his decision to fly migrants to California. 
as a Catholic bishop comes forward to condemn the move as, quote, reprehensible. That's next. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep, dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay. okay. Mm. Listen to this. On the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. You got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. We continue to follow historic news out of Washington, D.C. Former President Trump's attorney is confirming he has been federally indicted on seven counts of criminal charges. Now, the Justice Department hasn't unsealed the indictment yet, but according to Trump's legal team, he was indicted under the Espionage Act and is facing charges including conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and willful retention of national defense information. The former president confirming news of his indictment on his true social website. Website. He posted a video statement in which he railed against the Justice Department's case, calling it, quote, a weaponization of government. Trump also said he's been summoned to appear at a federal courthouse in Miami on Tuesday. Now, the case will reportedly be overseen by a Trump appointee, Judge Eileen Cannon. Cannon is a former federal prosecutor who has issued favorable rulings for Trump in legal challenges with the DOJ last year. John Flannery joins us now live. He's a former federal prosecutor for the Southern District of New York and a former special counsel to the Senate Judiciary Committee. John, thank you so much for your time today. Glad to be here. So, John, right before we began the newscast, we learned that two of Trump's top lawyers have stepped down. What does this signal to you? I mean, what do you think comes next? Uh, rats leaving a sinking ship. That's the way I'd look at it. Um, the uh, the two of them, uh, that is Rowley and... Uh, uh, trustee is it yes trustee. the two of them were at the department of justice meeting and uh so two of the three people who met with justice to discourage a prosecution are gone from the team not a good not a good sign also uh minutes ago as i understand it they've identified the person that trump is supposed to have conspired with uh, walt natal 
uh, N-A-U-T-A. I believe he is a person who helped the president move certain boxes uh, of these documents that, by the way, for these charges do not have to be classified. The national defense concern and the espionage charge, well, that uh, that doesn't require that they be classified, just that it affect the national defense. It's a pretty stern 10-year count. And then the other count that they had, which is uh, basically obstruction of justice, well, I think we've identified who that person is, but that has an interesting p provision. In Section B of that provision, if the president, former president, is convicted, he can be barred from public office. And that's a big deal. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there are many of us who believe at least that is appropriate, given the misconduct of this president that we know from the public. Of course, the criminal case may be conducted differently, but uh, there's too much that we know as citizens to see this other than as a pivot back toward a republic, a republic that is concerned that people be held responsible for their misconduct. And to that point, John, there are reports that this case is going to be handled initially by Judge Eileen Cannon, who is a Trump appointee, yes. who we know that a higher court has criticized her for a series of favorable rulings for Trump in the earlier stages of this investigation. Um, what do you make of that, and, and how will the Justice Department respond? Well, I think there are two ways. In, in my own history years ago, uh, I had a judge, and we disagreed in, in good faith about an international law issue. And when uh, we did prevail on appeal to the Second Circuit and came back to the judge, the judge was very careful to adhere to the Second Circuit ruling and showed no upsetness, that is, no emotion against it. Uh, if uh, Judge Cannon uh, is, well, partial or biased in this case, if she goes beyond the arraignment and the presentment of Trump on Tuesday, I think they'll be watching very closely for any bias, as was evident in some of her rulings. In other words, she held the view at one point that a president of the United States is, was deserving of better treatment than perhaps someone else. Well, that's just not acceptable if you're going to believe, and this is an example of that, this prosecution, that no man is or woman is above the law. Let's move on to the venue in this case and, and how it might impact the case overall. Why was the indictment brought in Miami? Well, I think there's several reasons. I mean, the, the first uh, legalese reason is what we call venue, which is what is the mass of contacts with any location where the crime was committed? Now, obviously, there was actions in D.C., there's actions in Florida, and one important uh, a meeting that Trump had in which he refers to a document involving our views about Iran was in New Jersey. But if you take the sum of all of the events, they really are situated, centered in Florida, number one. Number two, the courthouse in D.C. is overwhelmed with cases right now. And the Southern Florida jurisdiction has a reputation for being a rocket docket, if you will, something like the Eastern District of Virginia. And so that's another reason. A third reason, I think, is that the team that originally was concerned about both the subpoena and the search warrant that was litigated thoroughly before the same judge is in place in Florida. And I think that uh, uh, Jack Smith, special counsel, wants to take advantage of that reservoir of experience and so has made them the lead team. So I think all of these combined make sense. Some people say, how could this happen and why would this happen? And why didn't we know what the grand jury was doing? Well, that, that means they were doing their job. We're actually, they have no obligation to reveal it. And if it's found out, it's usually found out by people who go to the grand jury and come out and explain why they're there if they're seen on the streets, in, in this case, of Florida. So I, all of those reasons dictate this. Now, uh, what did they not expect if, uh, if Cannon is the judge in the case, that's uh, a fly in the ointment, I think, uh, because I don't think they expect, as they read that today, that uh, this is great news. Uh, it's not great news if she doesn't change from her earlier posture, although she did, uh, she did cooperate and confirm her conduct on remand with what the Court of Appeals said. So that's the, uh, that's the lay of the land, I think, in terms of procedure. And you're calling it a fly in the ointment. Uh, another fly in the ointment, at least for Trump's defense team, would be these audio tapes uh, that we've all been talking about. We know that six months after he left right. office, he was recorded saying that he had this classified material. He admitted that as president he could have declassified them. Now he can't. How will that audio tape factor into this? 
Uh, I think it would be helpful because it admits knowledge and it admits intent of what he's doing. And I could do things with it that he knows and should know uh, objectively. He can't do, you know, like this mind meld. If I just think about it, I can declassify it. And certain documents, the top secret documents, including the one that figures in the New Jersey meeting where he's heard ruffling papers and he's on tape there, that, that that's uh, very destructive. And we, we've seen him on TV basically say, I can do what I want, sort of. His arrogance overcame what would be good advice from a defense counsel to keep your mouth shut. But he can't do that. And that's a plus for the prosecution, in my opinion, because it means we may be able to do this with dispatch and be able to persuade America that the lies that are being told about the motivation for this being political is nothing more than a guy gone wrong, perhaps his whole life, but certainly while he was president of the United States and certainly since. In the meantime, Trump continues to use True Social to communicate. I mean, what do you make of this as a strategy, if you will? We still have yet to see the indictment. We know that he's, he's being charged with seven felony counts. Do you think the Justice Department is going to ask the court to unseal the indictment? I, I know that there are media organizations like Scripps News who've been calling for that. When are we going to see this indictment? Well, I agree. I think we could unseal it. The notion of sealing an indictment uh, was, in my younger days, that was an exceptional thing you did to protect witnesses and prevent flight and things like that. That wasn't going to happen in this case. So there really was no reason to seal it unless you wanted to give time, uh, if you will, and some courtesy to the accused and say, uh, we're going to unseal it at such and such a date. But they haven't made it available to them either. But we all know if we look at the charges from the search warrant uh, what the charges are going to be here and they're going to be the ones we've all been discussing and the devil's in the details but we know a lot of the details because so much of it has been out there and out of the mouth of trump himself the defendant in the multi-count indictment that's right and in basic evidence law the strongest evidence against a person is an admission against interest and going back years now when we were talking about uh, impeachment and so forth i was asked you know did uh, do you believe what trump said and i would say no i only believe what he says when he admits something against his interest and all right we're gonna have to leave it rule, right there john i'm so sorry to cut you off okay. we've got to get to a break john flannery is a former federal prosecutor for the southern district of new york john thank you so much for your time and your expertise and we'll be right we'll be thank right you back. very much when Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. Get what you're worth at Worthy.com. I can't afford this. Yeah, you can. Who are you? I'm you from the future, and I just got paid. And I'm Dave. I can get you up to 500 bucks of your future money now. 500 bucks instantly? Instantly. Awesome. And why are we naked? Oh, uh, after this, you're going to check into a nudist resort. They have free Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm, and volleyball. <laughs> cool. Download Dave and get up to 500 bucks instantly. No interest, no credit check. At Rulala, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names like Valentina, Vince, and more before they're gone. And Blue La La every day to score up to 70% off iconic brands. Shop RuLaLa.com today. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. The whole process was really simple and easy, and this is my third time selling to Carvana. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real off. Sell your car to Carvana today. I work at Lumi Deodorant, and I'm going to tell you how to get the best deal on Lumi. It's the starter pack. You pick two full-size deodorants, and you get two mystery items for free and free shipping. So now's your chance to try Lumi whole body deodorant with 72 hours of odor control. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use green light to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. 
that I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my endurance auto protection plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800, a transmission over $3,000, and an engine over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to endurancewarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit endurancewarranty.com for a free quote. Surprise Dad this Father's Day with something new. Fracture turns your images into more than a picture. Your photos are custom printed directly on glass to achieve brilliant color and clarity. Visit TryFracture.com and save up to 30% off. It's about trick plays and if yeah, ever the local hero national champ, Allie's home and he's back in the same Hey guys, am I dreaming or can we actually win this thing? Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. It's now half past the hour. Let's get speed on the biggest stories that we're tracking for you right now. Former President Donald Trump will be arraigned Tuesday after he says that he was indicted for mishandling classified documents. Trump confirming the indictments on his true social website. The Justice Department has not commented, but sources say charges will include violation of the Espionage Act, conspiracy to obstruct, and making false statements. President Biden ignored questions about the Trump indictment as he boarded Air Force One at Joint Base Andrews. He has two stops scheduled right now in North Carolina where he will be promoting his Invest in America program. He will then head to Fort Liberty to speak with the troops and their families. The FBI has arrested a Texas businessman who was part of an investigation that led to impeachment proceedings against State Attorney General Ken Paxton. 36-year-old Nate Paul being charged with making false statements. He is an Austin real estate developer. Eight employees in Paxton's office say that the attorney general was involved in bribery and abuse of office to help Paul. The haze and smoke from Canadian wildfires are clearing out of New York and other mid-Atlantic states now. It's now been shifting to the Midwest and then moving south. The air can irritate your eyes, your ears, and your throat. Some people in Richmond, Virginia say that they have been altering their plans and staying indoors as much as possible. Not taking the long dog walk today, not going to the park. And we're in and out of stores, taking it slow, and we're not doing as much shopping as we usually do. Probably anyone for any prolonged period of time is going to start feeling uh, something. They're going to start sneezing, having watery eyes, maybe even have a, have a cough. Uh, and so I would try to really limit that exposure time. And take a look at this, just how extensive all of that smoke is. It's coming out of Canada right into Detroit and then extending all the way down to Raleigh, North Carolina. So where is the rain when you need it? Scripps meteorologist Scott Withers is in smoky Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and says that the bad air quality from the wildfires goes beyond the U.S. and Canada. Veronica, the smoke really starting to build here now in the Midwest, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can see behind me there in the valleys around the city really starting to settle in because we've got this new bloom that just moved across the Great Lakes late last night, now moving through the Midwest. On the East Coast, though, things are starting to dissipate. She's a sight to see for the first time in days. The Statue of Liberty appearing through the smoke. Record-setting wildfire haze shrouding many of New York's iconic landmarks since Tuesday. Now the smoke dissipating in some of the hardest hit areas, but the air quality dangers still spreading across the Northeast. Stretching as far south as Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, inland across Pennsylvania to Detroit, which like New York City, was one of the top three most air polluted cities on the planet this week. But it's not just here, the smoke traveling across the Atlantic Ocean, covering Greenland and reaching all the way to Norway and Sweden. This is the first time, first time we've seen this. And it's, it, was, it was pretty brutal today. In cities large and small, people masking up, using those leftover pandemic era N95 masks. The smoke is kind of like strong, so I didn't want to breathe too much of it in. And I was out this morning without it on, so, and it's, you know, kind of like a walk, so I wanted to try to protect myself as much as I can. Smoke from the hundreds of wildfires burning in Canada, forcing schools to close, canceling events, and sending outdoor workers home early. Everything we do out is, is outside and it's strenuous work, so we didn't want to overtax them. So in the process of doing that, we suspended all of our highways work as well as our flood protection work. The smoke threatening the running of the Triple Crown's Belmont Stakes this weekend in Elmont, New York. The governor setting air quality limits that could cancel the race, all part of what she calls 
our new reality. You know, we're the first generation to really feel the effects of climate change and the last one to be able to do anything meaningful about it. Canada's wildfire season is just starting. So as the skies start to clear, there's fear the smoke could block out the views again later this summer. Things much better on the East Coast. We are able to see the Statue of Liberty today without that smoke. That is great news. But take a look at the smoke map here. You can see that smoke that caused the problems in New York, in Washington, D.C. The wind's now pushing that out to the Atlantic. That's where we need that to go. This other bloom here in the Midwest moving really quickly from Ontario down because of that new weather pattern. This is not going to stagnate, so we're not going to see those really bad air quality issues anywhere in the Midwest like we saw on the East Coast earlier this week. Take a look. Severe weather alerts all across the Midwest and the New England areas. That gray, that is those air quality alerts. Those are going to clear up over the course of the weekend by Tuesday. That'll be all gone. And we have some severe thunderstorms. Florida, going to be a rainy day for you. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, you're going to have some strong thunderstorms today. And on Saturday, Dallas, Fort Worth, be careful. Powerful storms there with some damaging hail. Veronica, the good news, this is almost done. But if you are going outside and in any of those impacted areas, make sure you take your mask with you today. Veronica. Scotty, thank you for that. In your next hour of Scripps News Live, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with an expert about wildfire danger and how predictions of an early El Nino system this year could impact fire risk as well as hurricane season. Professor Kim Cobb is going to be joining us straight ahead at 1.15 p.m. Eastern. So to come right now on Scripps News Live, what a Florida woman accused of killing a young mother during a dispute says that she did to the victim's children. We'll have the details for you, plus campaign ads slamming a rise in violent crime, telling one story, but the numbers are telling another. We'll have new data on the dramatic drop in murder rates for the first part of this year. And we want to remind you right here to follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. We'll be right back. This is an important message for anyone and everyone on or eligible for Medicare. If Medicare is important to you, then you need to hear this message because Medicare benefits matter to millions of Americans. Did you know Medicare has different parts, including Medicare Part A and Part B, often called Original Medicare? And then there's Medicare Part C, representing Medicare Advantage plans, and Part D for prescription drug coverage. Call 800-912-2786 now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. We can look up your plan and see if you're missing out on a plan with extra benefits or if your income qualifies you to reduce costs on your prescription medications. Did you know there are different enrollment periods like the Medicare annual enrollment period when beneficiaries can enroll in or change coverage? But there are also certain conditions or qualifications that may allow you to qualify for a special enrollment period any time of the year. So call the number on your screen now for your free Medicare coverage checkup. This is a free service that you can call at absolutely no cost to you. I'm on Medicare. I called to see if my income qualified for lower prescription medication costs. The friendly agent was very knowledgeable and I found out I qualified for a special enrollment period, so I'm so glad I called. We can look up your plan and see if you are missing out on a plan with extra benefits. We can also check to see if your income qualifies you to reduce the cost of your prescription medications. And we can even tell you if you qualify for a special enrollment period. It's your free Medicare coverage checkup at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-912-2786. And you can speak with a licensed agent who can check up on your plan and answer your questions. The Medicare Benefits and Questions line is open and anyone on or eligible for Medicare can call. The call and Medicare coverage checkup is free with no obligation. Call now. We love talking to people with Medicare, and the call is free. Just call 800-912-2786. 800-912-2786. Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. 
There is no upfront cost to see if your company is eligible. Plus, if you don't receive a refund, you pay nothing. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC advisors are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-259-3916. That's 800-259-3916. Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. Digging deeper into the headlines. We have some big stories to get to tonight. Shedding light on groundbreaking investigations and ending your night with something new. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Christian Bryant. Scripps News Tonight, live tonight, starting at 8, 7 central. Well, it's been a talking point for pundits and a focal point of campaign ads, a rise in violent crime. But new data shared by an analytics firm shows that murder rates are actually down nationwide compared to last year. In fact, this decline is on track to break a record. Scripps News crime and justice correspondent Jamal Andres joins us now live from Dallas. So I know that you've been going through some of the research, Jamal. What exactly have you found? Yeah, yeah, Veronica. Well, look. Those first two years of the pandemic were particularly bleak. You know, more Americans died of gun-related injuries in 2021 than any other year on record. In 2020, there was a 30% jump in homicides nationwide, by some estimates the largest year-over-year -year increase ever recorded. But thankfully, after all of that violence, an equally historic correction may be on the way. 2020 saw a historic rise in violence across the country. I've seen so much death. The 30% nationwide jump in homicides is by some estimates the largest year-over-year -year increase in more than a century, according to the CDC. It starts adding up when this is what you start. I should be collecting baseball cards, not, you know, obituaries. Thankfully, 2023 could see a historic correction as well. It doesn't feel good to report a 20% increase in murder. It, it feels a lot better to, to see that in these places, these things are going down. Jeff Asher is a crime analyst and co-founder of AH Datalytics. Asher's research shows a significant drop in murders across the country for the first third of this year. There was a 9.1% decrease in 1996. That was previously the largest decrease percent-wise from one year to the next. Um, if we get a 10% decrease this year, it'll be the first time we had double-digit decrease in murder. Cities like Milwaukee, Rochester, and Raleigh have experienced as big as a 58% decline in murder. Meanwhile, homicides are down by at least 12% in more than 90 cities nationwide. And Asher says much like the uptick in 2020, the downturn in killings has impacted big and small cities. Small town Jackson, 150,000 people. Atlanta, I think close to a half a million people in the city itself and then Philly, a couple of million people. And so three examples of places that are all seeing 25 plus percent declines in murder. And while the numbers are concrete, the reasons for the changes are much more difficult to nail down. You look at the numbers and the truth speaks, uh, people are coming together. Uh, we're safer than we were last year um, and, and we're never satisfied. Several cities have hired more police officers and increased overtime for the officers they have. Cities like Houston and New York have launched gun buyback programs. And across the country, many of the social community-led crime prevention programs that were forced to stop or go online during the pandemic have started their work again. The pandemic clearly has played an important role. But the role of the impact of the pandemic differs depending on the type of crime one looks at. Richard Rosenfeld is a criminologist and the co-author of the Council on Criminal Justice 2022 Crime Report. In many places, the homicide rise in 20 didn't really begin until uh, immediately after the George Floyd murder. And so I wouldn't discount a decline in confidence in the police and its consequences for cooperating with and reporting to the police. Uh, 
uh, as a contributor to the homicide rise. Unfortunately, though, this drop in murders has not correlated with a fall in mass shootings. According to the Gun Violence Archive, 24% more people have been injured during a mass shooting in the first three months for 2023 compared to last year. Now, Veronica Asher also told me you shouldn't expect crime to decline as quickly as it rises. You know, one of the largest crime declines we've seen came in the late 90s. There was a 37% drop in murders over a six-year period. And it came just like this, 6%, 7%, 8% at a time uh, over the course to build into that uh, much more safe America. So even though we're still above those 2019 levels, this is the kind of trend that researchers are hoping for. Yeah, really interesting findings. Jamal Anders reporting live from Dallas. Jamal, thank you so much. So the prime suspect in the 2005 disappearance of Alabama teen Natalie Holloway has just pleaded not guilty to extortion charges. It's going to top a look at more stories that we're tracking for you at this hour, including startling admissions from a Florida woman accused of killing her neighbor during a dispute and detailed in a police report. And the parents of a shooter who killed six people at a Nashville private school who are saying that they're going to turn over the shooter's private writings to the victim's families. Well, let's go ahead and start right here with the arraignment of Joran Vanders. Sloop. Just a short time ago, he pleaded not guilty to charges. He tried to extort money from the mother of Natalie Holloway. Vandersloot has long been a suspect in her disappearance. He had already been serving a 28-year sentence in Peru for the murder of another woman. Holloway, who was 18 years old at the time, disappeared during a trip to Aruba after leaving a bar with Vandersloot. A judge has granted bond for the white woman charged with fatally shooting her black neighbor. During a court hearing earlier, the judge set Susan Lawrence's bond at $154,000. Now, according to a police report, Lawrence says that she shot A.J. Owens last week in self-defense. Lawrence admitted to investigators that she called Owens' children the N-word several, several times in the months leading up to that shooting. She made her first court appearance yesterday. And the families of the Nashville school shooting victims will own the shooter's writings. The attorney representing the school shooter's parents says that he's going to help transfer ownership to the families. They've been seeking ownership to prevent the writings from being released to the public. Families believe that publicizing the material could lead to another school shooting. As of right now, the documents are in police custody. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis defending his decision to fly migrants to California as a Catholic bishop comes forward to condemn the move as, quote, reprehensible. And we'd like to hear from you. You can always give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer hotline toll-free, 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Share your comments and your story ideas. Are you ready for a fresh new bath or shower? Well, now is the best time with 50% off installation and no interest and no payments for one year. Hi, I'm Christina, and it's time to flip your old worn out bath or shower with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel today. Everyone knows the Jacuzzi brand. They're the most trusted name in water for over 60 years. But did you know they can install a gorgeous bath or shower that feels incredible in as little as one day? It's no stress and no mess with a lifetime warranty. Now let's talk beauty. You deserve to start and end your day in a beautiful space that feels great and is custom designed just for you. So call or go online now to see the Christina preferred designs like Canyon, Farm, and Urban. Now that's the total bathroom beauty that I love at a price you can afford. And how about safety? Like an ultra low profile, easy entry shower complete with grab bars and a custom design seat. You deserve safety and peace of mind without sacrificing style. Because with all the worries in daily life, taking a shower shouldn't be one of them. Every time I stepped over my old tub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi bath remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. I've been trying to get him to remodel that bath for years. I called and they did in just one day. And at a price we could afford. With one call to Jacuzzi Bath Remodel, you can effortlessly transform that old, ugly eyesore into the stunning bath or shower of your dreams that you'll love for years to come. Call or go online now to jacuzzibathremodel.com to get 50% off installation. Plus, ask how you may qualify for no interest and no payments for 12 months. And when you call right now, we'll give you our complete safety upgrade for free. Go to jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-218-1279. 
That's 800-218-1279. Call now. I work at Lumi Deodorant, and I'm going to tell you how to get the best deal on Lumi. It's the starter pack. You pick two full-size deodorants, and you get two mystery items for free and free shipping. So now's your chance to try Lumi whole body deodorant with 72 hours of odor control. At Rue La La, feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names before they're gone. Get in to never miss out. Shop RueLaLa.com today. Texas church who says it was tricked into participating in a political stunt has denounced Governor Ron DeSantis's decision to fly migrants to the state of California. Bishop Mark Seitz, who serves as the Catholic Diocese of El Paso, says it's now clear that the people who recruited those migrants at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church last week were using them to make a political point, an act that he is calling, quote, reprehensible. Governor DeSantis, in the meantime, is deflecting the criticism and defending his decision. During a visit to Arizona's southern border Wednesday, he justified his decision to fly those migrants to California, arguing that its sanctuary state policies, quote, incentivize illegal immigration. But if there's a policy to have an open border, then I think the sanctuary jurisdiction should be the ones that have to bear that. In the meantime, back in Florida, Governor DeSantis' own migration policies are coming under fire right now. State Representative Rick Roth, who voted in favor of the state's restrictive new migration laws, admitted this week in an interview with Insider that the law is already having a lot of, quote, negative consequences that he didn't anticipate. Even though this law doesn't go into effect until next month, it's already sparking confusion in migrant communities. And Representative Ross says that he's already heard from angry farmers who fear that their labor force is about to disappear. In an interview with NPR, Roth is admitting that he voted for the bill because it would, quote, scare migrants. And it has. Because as Scripps News' Joel Lopez reports now from West Palm Beach, Florida, not only are many of them planning to leave the fields, they are planning to leave the state of Florida entirely. The Guatemalan Maya Center says they've seen a surge in people calling, needing help, many asking if they should flee the state or risk staying through the new legislation. I have a fear of um, what's going to happen to me and my family. A migration of families leaving Florida is underway. I could go to another state and I could have um, another opportunity instead of staying here and risking it all. For construction workers like Ernesto Juan Ramirez from Guatemala, you have your papers to work here? No. No, I do not. So you're just hanging on to hope that yes. things will fix themselves by July? Yes. He's been working with the Guatemalan Maya Resource Center and the chance he's forced to move by July. Right now, all over the place, they're just going wherever they may have family, wherever they feel that they can reach. How much gas do we have in the tank? How far can we go? The center has launched a fundraiser to help families make it past to neighboring states that have similar Florida policies and guide them to places they say are more immigrant friendly. Obviously, being undocumented in the states is always a risk. So there's nowhere that you can go where you're going to be safe but you're going to have more access to resources. So Colorado has been one of those states. New Jersey has been one of those states. They'd like to give each family a $1,000 emergency fund to cover gas, food, car maintenance, and housing when they relocate. Our undocumented residents, like, they bring so much value to our community. Um, and it's not necessarily labor value. It's also just the value of being a person in our community that we share uh, time with, that we share community with. So we're going to see those impacts, I want to say, in the next couple of months. The center is also calling on local attorneys to volunteer their time and help answer questions and provide legal advice for those that are impacted. 
That was Joel Lopez there reporting for us. Now, despite the political discourse surrounding migration, there are still people that are providing hope and assistance to those in need. Christian Lopez with Scripps News Denver introduces us now to a man who is demonstrating the true spirit of compassion. I could tell that they were exhausted, they were hungry, uh, the kids were crying. It was, it was a pretty tough situation. Greg Mortimer met this family the night they arrived to Denver. They spent several months on a very difficult journey to the U.S. from Venezuela. Luis Antonio Ferrer says it was very hard. The kids suffered, they all suffered because of food and the journey to get here. When they arrived a few weeks ago, they were in a Walmart parking lot, feeling helpless, hungry, with no place to stay. It was raining, they were wet, they were cold, and and just trying to figure out what to do in a strange city that they didn't understand. Luis says they were desperate. It was hard, cold, a critical situation. That's when Mortimer and his friends stepped up to help. Luis says he was a godsend. He paid for their hotel and gave them food. A local nonprofit helped the family get into this apartment. Oh, I just felt heartbroken. I was thinking, okay, what would it have been like for my family and me if this country was in such a rough situation that we had to leave everything behind, flee to another country, and then just show up, not know the language, not know the culture, and just try to find our way. Greg is now dedicated to helping his new friends in any way he can. Help them get some furnishings for this apartment, help them get some food, and, and then also try to build community around them. And then I'm also trying to round up some additional friends that uh, we can just uh, maybe on a regular basis stop by, maybe have dinner with them or, or other folks who can maybe take a turn in terms of driving them to the church service. Muy bien, gracias a Dios. The family says it was a huge blessing. Greg says for him, that blessing is mutual. A blessing to meet these folks from Venezuela who are stronger than I am, they're more courageous than I am, and I just think they add so much to our community. I'm, I'm grateful for my new friends. He's encouraging others to help these families if you're able to. If everybody stepped up, churches, organizations, individual people, in a city the size of Denver, it shouldn't be that big of a deal to help a few thousand migrants fleeing a very desperate situation in their homeland to start to get adjusted to life here in the States. And that was Christian Lopez there reporting for us. We have much more to come in your next hour of Scripps News Live as we continue to follow new developments in the federal indictment of former President Trump. Our political team will have complete coverage for you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, and tonight it is game time on ION. Remind right here to watch WNBA action starting at 8 o'clock with the Phoenix Mercury and the Dallas Wings. That's followed by the Chicago Sky and the LA Sparks at 10 o'clock. To find out where you can watch, you can head to ionwnba.com. We'll be right back. If you have this and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs which for those on Medicare or soon to be is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare Supplement Plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't, and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, you'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. Your plan goes with you, anywhere you go in the country. Even better, these are the only plans of their kind, endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out-of-pocket costs and more peace of mind, Consider adding this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Plan. Take charge of your health care today. Just use this 
or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. Get what you're worth at Worthy.com. Do you have an idea for a story you would like to see or a comment on our coverage you want to share? We want to hear from you. Call our Scripps News viewer hotline at 833-4-SCRIPPS. That's 833-4-SCRIPPS. American people have a right to know what's in that indictment, and they have a right to know today. The unprecedented indictment of a former president of the United States. Former Sen Vice President Mike Pence calling on the Department of Justice to release the details of the federal indictment against former President Trump. Thank you so much for staying with us on this Friday afternoon. It is now 1 p.m. in the east and 10 a.m. out west. Hello to you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So this is now former President Trump's second indictment. This time, his legal team says he is facing seven counts of federal charges in the Justice Department's investigation of classified documents found in Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Let's get you right out to national political correspondent Alex Miller. Sh Miller, she's been tracking this case for us from the very beginning. Uh, Alex, let's go through some of these charges. These are reported charges against the former president. What do we know so far? Well, that's right. We don't know for sure because the Department of Justice has not commented. These charges have not yet been unsealed, but they have been c confirmed by the former president's attorney, now former attorney, as in as of the last hour or so. There are seven charges, according to him, and they are far more serious, Veronica, than the 34 that he faced back in April here in Manhattan uh, against the Manhattan District Attorney. Now, these charges are all relating to the mis mishandling of classified documents uh, at his personal residences. There's some relation to Mar-a-Lago. There's other relation I want to get into in a little bit that has to do with Bedminster, New Jersey, where he has his golf course. Now, let's look at what these charges are. Uh, they include obstruction of justice, willful retention of national defense information, conspiracy, making false statements. This all has to do with the Espionage Act, which is a hundred-year-old law that basically can criminalize handing over or sharing sensitive military information. Now, go Going back to what we were just talking about, where this all occurred, we know that at least some of those documents uh, were at Mar-a-Lago, but according to CNN, they have reporting that a tr of a transcript of a situation that took place in Bedminster, New Jersey, where the former president was apparently sharing classified information um, with people who were not privy to see it, obviously not uh, in a skiff or in any sort of secure facility. Um, and so in that situation, apparently, according to CNN's reporting, he acknowledges that this is secret information, that this is information that he should have declassified in his words when he was president, but didn't have the power to do that now. Now, we want to try to see what these charges actually look like on paper from the Department of Justice 
But as of now, we probably won't see them until his uh, Tuesday appearance in court. Uh, but Scripps News, in addition to many other news organizations, is trying to unseal those before Tuesday so that we can get a little bit more information and really figure out what this looks like um, a little bit more deeply. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And uh, we know in the meantime that Trump has been using True Social to communicate, uh, which is how we learned about this indictment to begin with. What has he had to say so far? What has his response been to the indictment? Yeah, it's interesting that he was the one to report once again his own indictment. He called this a dark day in America. He's been posting very regularly over the last 24 hours about this. Uh, he also made a video. I want you to listen to what he had to say. So I just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we will fight this out just like we've been fighting for seven years. Our country is going to hell and they come after Donald Trump, weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI. We can't let this continue to go on because it's ripping our country to shreds. We have such big problems and this shouldn't be one of them. It's a hoax. And as of now, we are expecting the former president to be present in Miami on Monday when these charges are unsealed. But there was a lot of logistical concerns that happened, similar to what we saw here in New York. When we knew that the indictment was coming back in April, uh, there were, uh, was obviously a lot of extra security. There were conversations between uh, the police here in New York City and also the Secret Service because they are still around to protect the former president. The building where the courthouse is, that was locked down except for just a couple of floors. We saw the streets closed down so there's there is a lot to figure out logistically between now and then not only for the former president's safety but the judges and people who work in those courthouses safety and of course anybody who ends up outside and if it's any indication of what it looked like back in april if that's an indication of what it will look like next week it is going to be a circus yeah and tuesday at this point is right around the corner uh alex i wanted to ask you about trump's inner circle i understand there have been some changes to his inner circle beginning with one of his top attorneys jim trustee what can you tell us yeah, Jim Trustee is the one who was on air yesterday confirming these charges and going into detail about specifically what those charges were. Now, less than 24 hours later, he is offering his resignation along with another attorney, the former president, posting on his true social account confirming that this is the case. Uh, the attorneys also releasing a statement saying that they offered their resignation. Uh, but they are not the only ones in his inner circle that have been affected. Apparently, recently, the former president also posted uh, with in the last hour, hour and a half, uh, that one of his aides also has been indicted in connection with this case. Again, the Department of Justice, Veronica, has not confirmed this, so we are just hearing this from the former president himself. All right, Alex Miller reporting live in New York for us. Alex, thank you so much for the update there. Now, as word of this indictment has spread, Trump supporters have been gathering near Mar-a-Lago. Victor Jorge with Scripps West Palm Beach is saying that they don't seem shaken at all. Some of Donald Trump's supporters are upset about these developments, these accusations against the former president. Some of them are saying it's simply not right and it should be President Biden who should be in trouble with the law. Biden's supposed to go indict me because he's having thousand, thousand the docu classified document in his Corvette in the garage. Nothing happened to him. Other supporters of the former president are calling this a witch hunt. A federal indictment of former President Donald Trump prompted a crowd of about 20 supporters to gather Thursday night near Mar-a-Lago. Supporters brought their banners, flags, hats, and trucks to the very spot where many of them came to rally when the FBI first raided Mar-a-Lago back in August of last year. Right here near Mar-a-Lago, we've also seen and heard people drive by saying, lock him up. Of course, those are people that are for this indictment. Now, for those who are against this indictment, for Donald Trump, they're expected to be here later today, and they're expected to also be here through the weekend. Near Mar-a-Lago, I'm Victor Jorges for Scripps News. John Flannery joins us now live. He's a former federal prosecutor for the Southern District of New York and a former special counsel to the Senate Judiciary Committee. John, thank you so much for your time today. Glad to be here. So, John, right before we began the newscast, we learned that two of Trump's top lawyers have stepped down. What is this signal to you? I mean, what do you think comes next? Uh, rats leaving a sinking ship. That's the way I'd look at it. Um, the uh, the two of them, uh, that is Rowley and uh, 
uh, trustee, is it? Yes. Trustee. The two of them were at the Department of Justice meeting. And uh, so two of the three people who met with justice to discourage a prosecution are gone from the team. Not a good, not a good sign. Also, uh, minutes ago, as I understand it, they've identified the person that Trump is supposed to have conspired with, uh, Walt Natal, uh, N-A-U-T-A. I believe he is a person who helped the president move certain boxes uh, of these documents that, by the way, for these charges do not have to be classified. The national defense concern and the espionage charge well, that uh, that doesn't require that they be classified, just that it affect the national defense. It's a pretty stern 10-year count. And then the other count that they had, which is uh, basically obstruction of justice, well, I think we've identified who that person is, but that has an interesting provision. In Section B of that provision, if the president, former president, is convicted, he can be barred from public office. And that's a big deal. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there are many of us who believe at least that is appropriate, given the misconduct of this president that we know from the public. Of course, the criminal case may be conducted differently, but uh, there's too much that we know as citizens to see this other than as a pivot back toward a republic, a republic that is concerned that people be held responsible for their misconduct. And to that point, John, there are reports that this case is going to be handled initially by Judge Eileen Cannon, who is a Trump appointee, yes. who we know that a higher court has criticized her for a series of favorable rulings for Trump in the earlier stages of this investigation. Um, what do you make of that, and, and how will the Justice Department respond? Well, I think there are two ways. In, in my own history years ago, uh, I had a judge, and we disagreed in, in good faith about an international law issue. And when uh, we did prevail on appeal to the Second Circuit and came back to the judge, the judge was very careful to adhere to the Second Circuit ruling and showed no upsetness, that is, no emotion against it. Uh, if uh, Judge Cannon uh, is, well, partial or biased in this case, if she goes beyond the arraignment and the presentment of Trump on Tuesday, I think they'll be watching very closely for any bias, as was evident in some of her rulings. In other words, she held the view at one point that a president of the United States is, was deserving of better treatment than perhaps someone else. Well, that's just not acceptable if you're going to believe, and this is an example of that, this prosecution, that no man is or woman is above the law. Let's move on to the venue in this case and, and how it might impact the case overall. Why was the indictment brought in Miami? Well, I think there's several reasons. I mean, the, the first uh, legalese reason is what we call venue, which is what is the mass of contacts with any location where the crime was committed? Now, obviously, there was actions in D.C., there's actions in Florida, and one important uh, a meeting that Trump had in which he refers to a document involving our views about Iran was in New Jersey. But if you take the sum of all of the events, they really are situated, centered in Florida, number one. Number two, the courthouse in D.C. is overwhelmed with cases right now. And the Southern Florida jurisdiction has a reputation for being a rocket docket, if you will, something like the Eastern District of Virginia. And so that's another reason. A third reason, I think, is that the team that originally was concerned about both the subpoena and the search warrant that was litigated thoroughly before the same judge is in place in Florida. And I think that uh, uh, Jack Smith, special counsel, wants to take advantage of that reservoir of experience and so has made them the lead team. So I think all of these combined make sense. Some people say, how could this happen and why would this happen and why didn't we know what the grand jury was doing? Well, that, that means they were doing their job. We're actually, they have no obligation to reveal it. And if it's found out, it's usually found out by people who go to the grand jury and come out and explain why they're there if they're seen on the streets, of, in this case, of Florida. So I, all of those reasons dictate this. Now, uh, what did they not expect? if? Uh, if Cannon is the judge in the case, that's uh, a fly in the ointment, I think, uh, because I don't think they expect, as they read that today, that uh, this is great news. Uh, it's not great news if she doesn't change from her earlier posture, although she did, uh, she did cooperate and confirm her conduct on remand with what the Court of Appeals said. So that's the, uh, that's the lay of the land, I think, in terms of procedure.
Big thanks to former federal prosecutor John Flannery there for his expertise. Our coverage on former President Trump's federal indictment continues in less than 30 minutes from now. We're going to take a closer look at the case and how the White House is now responding. You can also follow Scripps News on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, plus TikTok for the very latest. The El Nino weather phenomenon arriving early. Straight ahead, we're going to explain why it's raising fears of extreme weather and record heat. Plus, don't forget, you can always count on Scripps News for all of your headlines throughout the primetime hours as well, beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. Mom, we're so glad you're feeling better. You gave us such a scare. I know, honey, me too. But I want you to know I'm at peace with my home going when my time is up. And did I also tell you that I got coverage for my funeral so you and your brother would not have to worry about expenses? I didn't know you were saving money for your final expenses. I haven't. I called Open Care, and with one phone call, I was eligible for $30,000 for my funeral and final expenses. That's wonderful, Mom, but how did you pass your medical exam with your health condition? Oh, that's the best part. No medical exam is needed. That's right, and my rates can never increase, my benefits will not decrease, and my coverage will never be canceled. Mom, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. We don't want to leave our loved ones with debt. The cost of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. A final expense life insurance plan will pay up to $30,000, which can be used for funeral and other final expenses. Call 800-915-6980 now for your free information. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. There's no obligation. Call 800-915-6980. That's 800-915-6980. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Smoke from Canadian wildfires are clearing out of New York and other mid-Atlantic states right now, and it's been shifting to the Midwest and moving south. The air can irritate your eyes, your ears, and your throat, and some people are saying that they are altering their plans and they're staying indoors as much as possible. Take a look at this. Look how extensive that smoke is. It's coming right out of Canada, pouring into Detroit, and then extending all the way down to Raleigh, North Carolina. So the question right here is, where is the rain when you need it? Scripps meteorologist Scott Withers is in smoky Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for us, and he says the bad air quality from the wildfires goes way beyond the U.S. and Canada. Veronica, the smoke really starting to build here now in the Midwest, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You can see behind me there in the valleys around the city really starting to settle in because we've got this new bloom that just moved across the Great Lakes late last night, now moving through the Midwest. On the East Coast, though, things are starting to dissipate. She's a sight to see for the first time in days. The Statue of Liberty appearing through the smoke. Record-setting wildfire haze shrouding many of New York's iconic landmarks since Tuesday. Now the smoke dissipating in some of the hardest hit areas, but the air quality dangers still spreading across the Northeast. Stretching as far south as Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. 
inland across Pennsylvania to Detroit, which, like New York City, was one of the top three most air-polluted cities on the planet this week. But it's not just here. The smoke traveling across the Atlantic Ocean, covering Greenland, and reaching all the way to Norway and Sweden. This is the first time, first time we've seen this. And it's, it, was, it was pretty brutal today. In cities large and small, people masking up, using those leftover pandemic-era N95 masks. The smoke is kind of like strong, so I didn't want to breathe too much of it in. And I was out this morning without it on, so, and it's, you know, kind of like a walk, so I wanted to try to protect myself as much as I can. Smoke from the hundreds of wildfires burning in Canada, forcing schools to close, canceling events, and sending outdoor workers home early. Everything we do out is, is outside and it's strenuous work, so we didn't want to overtax them. So in the process of doing that, we suspended all of our highways work as well as our flood protection work. The smoke threatening the running of the Triple Crown's Belmont Stakes this weekend in Elmont, New York. The governor setting air quality limits that could cancel the race, all part of what she calls our new reality. You know, we're the first generation to really feel the effects of climate change and the last one to be able to do anything meaningful about it. Canada's wildfire season is just starting. So as the skies start to clear, there's fear the smoke could block out the views again later this summer. Things much better on the East Coast. We are able to see the Statue of Liberty today without that smoke. That is great news. But take a look at the smoke map here. You can see that smoke that caused the problems in New York, in Washington, D.C. The wind's now pushing that out to the Atlantic. That's where we need that to go. This other bloom here in the Midwest moving really quickly from Ontario down because of that new weather pattern. This is not going to stagnate, so we're not going to see those really bad air quality issues anywhere in the Midwest like we saw on the East Coast earlier this week. Take a look. Severe weather alerts all across the Midwest and the New England areas. That gray, that is those air quality alerts. Those are going to clear up over the course of the weekend by Tuesday. That'll be all gone. And we have some severe thunderstorms. Florida, going to be a rainy day for you. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, you're going to have some strong thunderstorms today. And on Saturday, Dallas, Fort Worth, be careful. Powerful storms there with some damaging hail. Veronica, the good news, this is almost done. But if you are going outside and in any of those impacted areas, make sure you take your mask with you today. Veronica. All right, Scotty, thank you for that. Hawaii's Kilauea volcano in the meantime, putting on quite the show. Take a look at this. That latest eruption just spewing lava and fire right up into the nighttime sky. This is the second time that volcano has erupted this year. And we're being told no people or buildings are in danger, at least for now. So meteorologists are saying that an El Nino has formed earlier than usual and it's expected to increase global temperatures. Now, an El Nino is a natural temporary warming of part of the tropical Pacific Ocean. It can increase the risk of heavy rainfall and drought in certain areas. Kim Cobb is the director of the Institute at Brown for Environment Society and joins us now live. Dr. Cobb, thank you so much for stopping by today. Oh, thanks for having me, Veronica. What are the concerns about this particular El Nino? What does the fact that this climate phenomenon is forming earlier tell you? Well, it certainly is off to a heady start, um, but it's important to remember that it's still too early to understand exactly how large it will get in the coming six months left of its uh, development stage. And of course, exactly what those patterns of warming will be across an area as vast as the tropical Pacific. Those two factors will determine so much about the impacts going forward. But the key concerns here are that the ocean temperatures around the global basins are so warm going into this, record-breakingly warm that all bets are a little bit uncertain with respect to how this will impact communities around the world, as well as, of course, marine ecosystems, which typically take a huge hit during El Nino events. The other thing to remember is that if this emerges as one of the strongest class of events in the historical record, which it still could be, it will be the shortest recurrence time on record, a mere eight years since the last major El Nino event hit the planet about in 2016. So those are the, some of the things to be concerned about. And of course, we're already reeling from climate and weather extremes um, year to year from ongoing man-made climate change, uh, we do not need another source of climate extremes uh, impacting temperature extremes and rainfall extremes from Greenland to Antarctica. Now we're just about to move into hurricane season. How will El Nino have an impact? 
Well, that's a good news, bad news story, depending on where you live. El Nino and uh, sister cooling event La Nina, uh, characterized by a series of winners and losers, many of whom are quite predictable. In this case, North Atlantic hurricane season is projected to be suppressed in line with El Nino's uh, dampening effect on the North Atlantic hurricane season uh, that's been observed uh, during past events. Now, of course, if you are living in the West Pacific, we expect a dramatic uptick in hurricane and typhoon related activity across that portion of the world as those water temperatures warm uh, during the El Nino related warming that originates in the tropical Pacific. Uh, but obviously for the U.S., a good news story for the Gulf and the Southeast United States. So the way that I understand it then is that it will suppress certain areas, but then it will impact other areas more because of the warming of the water. Is that what you're explaining? That's correct. El Nino is really characterized by a host of climate and weather extremes. Uh, they go in opposite directions in some region of the world, but they have catastrophic impacts no matter what the direction of the sign is. So, for example, uh, wide, widespread drought and wildfires expected across the Western Pacific. That always occurs during El Nino's. Uh, the last major wildfires in 2016 were devastating on Borneo. We expect those. But on the other side of the Pacific Basin, we will have deluges and catastrophic catastrophic flooding related to this El Nino event. And that can stretch from uh, the southeastern, uh, southwestern United States all the way down through Central America, South America coastlines. So it's again, uh, some of this is a seesaw related set of impacts. Uh, but again, the global reach is uh, very clear from past records. The exact pattern of those impacts and the size of those impacts uh, is yet to be determined by the eventual size too early to predict, and of course the exact uh, flavor of this event uh, and where those warmest sea surface temperatures land ultimately. Now NOAA is saying that there's a 56% chance that this El Nino will be strong, but a 25% chance that it will be supersized. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, so if it emerges to be one of the larger classes of events, it will rival some of the largest El Nino events that we've had on record, and we can count those on one hand over the last several decades. Uh, so 2016 was the largest event on record, and it actually did cause a global temperature record that still stands to this day, in fact. So uh, the chances of becoming a strong or very strong event those are very high numbers. And what that really means is that communities have a chance to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. We still have six months of continued development until this event really shows its its true colors later on this calendar year and peaks before it declines into next spring. So plenty of time for communities to prepare, especially those that historically have been deeply impacted by El Nino events. Here in the United States, that would be the Pacific Northwest, uh, warmer and drier. The southeastern, western U.S., uh, obviously much wetter, as I mentioned before, southeastern United States, cooler and wetter. So for sensitive industries, including agriculture, freshwater resources, wildfire management, um, and of course the winter uh, recreation industries, all things that are going to be deeply impacted should this event emerge to be one of the strongest classes of events on the historical record. And you are saying cooler and wetter for the southeast. Uh, how does that play into hurricane season? Like you said, there might still be six months where communities can prepare. What would your best advice be right now? Well, obviously, keep an eye on this event as it continues to emerge. Uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration will be releasing regular updates uh, that anybody can gain access to. And of course, uh, emergency planners and responders, you better believe, already looking at how this event will impact the coming months of weather and climate extremes. But let's um, not mince words. We are already reeling through unprecedented weather and climate territory under continued fossil fueled warming. Uh, we're facing streams from month to month and year to year that are seemingly unrelenting. And so this is going to be a pile on, but we have to make sure that we are prepared for our coming climate extremes that are now unfortunately a regular part of our lives, no matter what El Nino is doing or not doing in the Pacific. All right. Climate scientist, Dr. Kim Cobb of Brown University. Dr. Cobb, thank you so much for explaining that. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And coming up next on Scripps News Live, how the White House has been responding to former President Trump's indictment on seven federal charges, plus the Pentagon signing off on more aid for Ukraine, how officials are planning to spend another $2 billion as the war between Russia and Ukraine rages on. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of 
cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitiv can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitiv uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitiv. Revitiv is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitiv. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitiv a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitiv has given me a better quality of life because I am living without pain. Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Now, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like, let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep. Dad's wants steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering Dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com slash TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. Sunday nights on In Real Life. Food for the baby? Yeah! <laughs> Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. Stunts have become more specialized. And to the heart of the story. When the pandemic hit, the American dream kind of changed. There were a lot of warning signs. They just didn't care. In Real Life, Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Back to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Friday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up now on the day's top stories. The FBI arrested the Texas businessman who was part of an investigation that led to the impeachment of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. Nate Paul is charged with making false statements. He is an Austin real estate developer. Eight employees in Paxton's office say that the Attorney General was involved in bribery and abuse of office to help Paul. Well, the Pentagon is saying it will soon send an additional $2.1 billion in aid to Ukraine. The money will be divided among Patriot missile equipment, Hawks air defense systems, and missiles and Puma drones that launch by hand. As the White House pledges to help Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russia, it's made it clear no American troops will be deployed there. And we continue to follow historic news on former President Trump being indicted on seven counts of federal charges. The Department of Justice has not unsealed the indictment. Scripps News Deputy Political Director Joe St. George takes a closer look at the charges so far and how we got here. Another historic first involving former President Donald Trump, the first American president to be charged with a federal crime. Really, Mr. Trump breaking the news of his indictment himself on Truth Social last night. This indictment remains sealed, so it hasn't actually been revealed yet. All the reporting uh, based on sourcing. He is expected, as Mr. Trump revealed on Truth Social, not yet officially confirmed by the Department of Justice, but he's expected to make an appearance in Miami 3 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. And if you're wondering why Miami, legal experts tell Scripps News that typically prosecutors like to bring charges in the 
jurisdiction in which they allegedly took place. And remember, all of this stems from that FBI search of Mar-a-Lago earlier this year in which reportedly around 300 or so sensitive documents were discovered. Again, the indictment that happened in New York earlier this year, the indictment that is happening now at the federal level really couldn't be more different. One is a federal charge, one is a state charge. Federal charges, and this is step Z and we're only on step A, federal charges potentially could bring about a pardon from the President of the United States, uh, for instance. Mr. Trump, from a political standpoint, was ready for this indictment. His team immediately fundraising off of the news. And he also posted this video, his innocence, on Truth Social. So I just want to tell you, I'm an innocent man. I did nothing wrong. And we'll fight this out just like we've been fighting. Our country is going to hell. And they come after Donald Trump weaponizing the Justice Department. One of the counts that Mr. Trump is expected to face involves the Espionage Act. That may sound like something out of a James Bond movie. Oftentimes you hear that related to spying. Mr. Trump's not expected to be charged with spying. The Espionage Act is a very lengthy federal law. It contains many provisions related to the mishandling of sensitive documents, which is really what this entire case is about. From a political standpoint, this is falling very much along the party lines. Many Democrats across the country this morning saying that no one is above the law. Many Conservatives are saying this is the, a weaponization of the Department of Justice. Even Mr. Trump's chief rival for the Republican nomination in 2024, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, sending a sympathetic message on social media. Why so zealous in pursuing Trump, yet so passive about Hillary or Hunter, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis writes. It's unclear if Mr. Trump will receive a bump in the polls this time like he did last time he was indicted. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Well, mom seems to be the word of the White House right now. The Biden administration has been fairly quiet after reports of former President Trump's indictment came to light. White House correspondent Haley Bull joining us now live from Washington. So, Haley, there's been no official word from the White House so far. But have we heard anything more from the president about the indictment? Veronica, mum is still the word at the White House here this afternoon. They are not commenting directly on the case. When the news broke, a White House official tells us that senior staff told President Biden about the reports. The White House says that they had no advanced knowledge of that. Uh, beyond that, the White House has really steered clear of commenting. Uh, and that's in line with what we have seen from the Biden administration so far. Uh, the White House has maintained that the Justice Department operates separately, really distancing themselves uh, from perceptions of influence. And that remains the case today. The White House says uh, the president believes in respecting the independence and the integrity of the Justice Department. But as we have seen, Trump and a number of Republican lawmakers uh, have accused the Biden administration of, quote, weaponizing the Justice Department. Now, before news of the indictment broke, uh, President Biden reiterated the DOJ's independence when pressed on those criticisms. Listen. Because you notice, I have never once not one single time suggested the Justice Department what they should do or not do relative to bringing a charge or not bringing a charge. I'm honest. Meanwhile, DNC officials have said they'll let the investigation, quote, play their course uh, and rather have instead focused on contrasting their views on the issues with what they call, quote, MAGA Republicans. Now, keep in mind, President Biden has faced his own investigation into classified documents. The attorney general also appointed a special counsel in that case earlier in the year. Uh, the difference is in how the documents were found. According to the attorney general's office, Earlier this year, White House counsel notified the National Archives that documents were found at the Penn Biden Center in D.C. and then later at a garage in his Delaware home from his time as uh, vice president. Uh, meanwhile, while this is all unfolding, uh, the president is traveling in North Carolina to talk about uh, workforce training programs as well as support for military families. Veronica.
All right, Haley Bull live outside of the White House with the latest on that. Haley, thank you so much. So in your next hour of Scripps News Live, our coverage of former President Trump's federal indictment will continue. Chris Edelson, assistant professor in the Department of Government at American University, will be joining us to discuss Trump's pending arraignment and also details of the case. Again, that is straight ahead at 2.15 p.m. Eastern. Coming up in this hour of Scripps News Live, in the meantime, a growing number of people who are released from prison are back behind bars within a year. We're going to take a look at the numbers and explore why next. Attention anyone new to Medicare, moving or losing coverage for any reason. You may qualify for a Medicare special enrollment period. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Part C plan with extra benefits. Did you know Medicare Part C is commonly called Medicare Advantage? If you qualify for an SEP, call now because there may be plans with extra benefits available that are not covered under Medicare Parts A and B. There are people who qualify for special enrollment but don't have a Medicare Advantage Part C plan, which covers everything at Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits not covered by original Medicare. Here's the good news. If you qualify, you can call now. We will check to see if there is a Medicare Advantage Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Call now to speak with a licensed insurance agent to see if you are eligible to enroll in a 2023 Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits like dental coverage or savings on prescription medications. You don't get these extra benefits automatically, so call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-543-6120. 800-543-6120. Attention anyone new to Medicare, moving or losing coverage for any reason. You may qualify for a Medicare special enrollment period. Call now to see if you're eligible to enroll in a Medicare Part C plan with extra benefits. Did you know Medicare Part C is commonly called Medicare Advantage? If you qualify for an SEP, call now because there may be plans with extra benefits available that are not covered under Medicare Parts A and B. There are people who qualify for special enrollment but don't have a Medicare Advantage Part C plan, which covers everything at Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits not covered by original Medicare. Here's the good news. If you qualify, you can call now. We will check to see if there is a Medicare Advantage Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Call now to speak with a licensed insurance agent to see if you are eligible to enroll in a 2023 Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits like dental coverage or savings on prescription medications. You don't get these extra benefits automatically, so call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-543-6120. 800-543-6120. Attention all business owners. If you had W-2 employees during the COVID-19 pandemic, you may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee with the Employee Retention Tax Credit. The deadline to file your claims is approaching. Call now to see if your business qualifies. This approved payroll tax refund program from the U.S. Treasury Department is set up to reward business owners who kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. There is no upfront cost to see if your company is eligible. Plus, if you don't receive a refund, you pay nothing. You want a trusted partner who understands the IRS guidelines. ERC advisors are standing by to help your business claim your COVID refund. You may be entitled to up to $26,000 per employee. This quick and easy call can get your business the money it deserves. Don't miss the deadline to file your claims. Just call 800-259-3916. That's 800-259-3916. If I had to replace my engine, the bill would have been over four grand. But my endurance auto protection plan covered it all. A broken AC unit costs over $1,800. A transmission, over $3,000. And an engine, over $4,000. Breakdowns used to mean paying thousands out of pocket until now. Go to endurancewarranty.com or call Endurance today and stop paying for expensive auto repairs. Call 877-204-1467 or visit endurancewarranty.com for a free quote. And a quick reminder right here, we'd like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll-free. That number is on your screen. It's 833-4-SCRIPS. Share your comments and your story ideas. So sometimes data about our justice system doesn't always paint the full picture. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, the U.S. prison population in 2021 dropped 25% over a decade. But the number of people who are re-arrested within the first year of their release is alarmingly high. National correspondent Dan Grossman takes a closer look at why. New beginnings don't just happen. For people like Brian Johnson, that are unlocked. Oh, it's open. It's been open. Are you gonna come upstairs? Through diligent steps that are taken in homes away from public view. 
This is the house on Mason Avenue. This is Mason Avenue. We call it the Mason. Today is a big day for Brian. He's 33 and is two months out of prison, and he's getting ready for a job interview stocking shelves at Walmart. I think the job help, help with showing people that I'm changing. If he succeeds, it will make him the exception to the rule, since many of the people in Brian's very position don't succeed. The system, to me, sets you up to add to the uh, recidivism rate. That's what, you know, I did a paper on this when I was in um, prison, right? I was telling them that I had to been like probably 27, 28, and I had a few more years to go home. I was excited, but at the same time, you sad. Not only because you were incarcerated, isolated from society, but because you sit here like, who do I ask for help? As Brian learned, Help doesn't always come to those who are searching for it the most. Nationwide, more than half of the formerly incarcerated are unable to find stable employment within their first year of return, and three quarters of them are rearrested within their first three years of release. Some might write that off, saying it's due to the choices these individuals make. Brian says there's more to it. Sometimes those choices are the only ones available for survival. I feel that there's a lot to be done. I feel that um, there should be there should be more avenues for people to talk what we call real talk. Lawrence Bartley is with the Marshall Project, a nonprofit journalism institution that shines a light on the criminal justice system. One of the shortcomings in society is a lack of adequate reentry programs that the American Psychological Association says leaves men and women with minimal preparation, which makes their reentry into communities challenging. Formerly incarcerated people are 10 times more likely to be homeless than the general population. They are also half as likely to get a call back from prospective employers due to stigma and laws that allow employers and landlords to refuse people based on criminal records. This is screaming ice cream. This is my main job right here. My cousin started a shirt line. Things Brian experienced when he was placed into a homeless shelter for two weeks upon his release. For me to uh, put a little money in my pocket. Had it not been for the open arms of his cousin, who he's currently staying with, Brian worries he might still be in a shelter. It's frustrating. You know, life is full of challenges. And my thing is, when I make the, the, the initial step, when I make these steps to, um, you know, better my life, and I'm going to where I see the sign that says, this is where help is at. You should have the answers. Man, you got to get the shot over. The do-rag was ugly. You took the pictures, man. This is Brian's first step toward his new beginning. We're going to see what happened at this interview. We're going to get it. Trust me. This is it right here. Stocking shelves. I'm going to be the best shelf stocker ever. All right. A door he has worked diligently to unlock as he hopes to defy the statistics that say he is more likely to fail than succeed. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Binghamton, New York. A judge granted bond for the white woman charged with fatally shooting her black neighbor in Ocala, Florida. During a court hearing earlier, the judge set Susan Lawrence's bond at $154,000. Now, according to the police report, Lawrence says that she shot A.J. Owens last week in self-defense. Lawrence admitted to investigators that she called Owens' children the N-word several times in the months leading up to the shooting. She made her first court appearance yesterday. And the families of the Nashville school shooting victims will own the shooter's writings. The attorney representing the school shooter's parents says that he's going to help transfer ownership to the families. They've been seeking ownership to prevent the writings from becoming public. Families believe publicizing the material could lead to another school shooting. And as of now, those documents are in police custody. Trauma from school shootings and similar attacks doesn't just fade away with time. The former principal of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, where 17 people were killed back in February of 2018, is now working to help others. Stephanie Suskin with Scripps News West Palm Beach has more on the story. Every time a school shooting comes up, it brings everything back. And that, that's why it's almost like taking one step forward uh, and then two steps back. Because it's like, oh, my God, are we ever going to, every time we turn around, there's something else going on. It just brings it, brings it all right back. And um, it's, it's difficult. Former Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School principal Ty Thompson has turned his pain into purpose. This is the group you don't want to be a part of. 
Um, but we have really rallied as far as being able to develop some things and work as a cohesive unit. He's a founding member of the Principal Recovery Network, a group of about 20 school leaders who have tragically experienced gun violence on their campuses. How can we make a positive out of all this negative? We're hoping that we're going to be able to use our, our power as, as this group to advocate for some, some policies to you know, move things forward. The group spent time in Washington, D.C. this week, meeting with members of Congress, the Department of Education and Homeland Security to share their message and the need for more legislation to support mental health, wellness, and safety in schools. At the same time, back home... 17 beautiful people... Another chapter in the Stoneman Douglas shooting. Trial now underway for the former school resource officer Scott Peterson, who did not go inside the building when the shooting happened. He's charged with felony child neglect. His attorney argues he didn't know where the shooter was. We've got 22 witnesses under subpoena who will come in here and tell you that they too heard the same shots my client did and could not discern precisely where the shots were coming from. Thompson says it re-traumatizes the community with every turn in the case, but he stays keyed in. If something comes up, I'm just kind of mentally prepared for, you know, how I can help them, whoever's calling me or whatever, to help them kind of get through it. He says it's been therapeutic to form the Principal Recovery Network. We're just here to help the next unfortunately poor soul that has to go through this because they shouldn't have to go through it alone. And the group's work is just beginning. I think the only way things are going to start to move forward if it is if we can humanize the situation. And the only way you're going to do that is to get people like us that have been through this that can get in front of uh, groups or whoever it happens to be to tell our story. Stephanie Suskind, Scripps News. breaking news right here on Scripps News Live. We are now learning that the Department of Justice has just unsealed the federal charges against Donald Trump involving the handling of classified information. Again, he has been formally charged on seven different counts. Those are felony charges and he is awaiting arraignment in Miami. That's going to take place in Miami on Tuesday. Uh, the Department of Justice unsealing that indictment. We have not taken a look at it quite yet, but as soon as we get it into the news Room, we're going to be sharing it with you. We'll have much more on this straight ahead on Scripps News Live. Also straight ahead on Scripps News Live, two giant ducks making a splash and causing quite the frenzy in Hong Kong. We're going to explain the joy behind these double ducks straight ahead. And at just 18 years old, she's already a college grad, and now she is focusing on her next move. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. And as long as you stay focused and you're determined, there's, there's really nothing that you can't do. We're going to meet this Ohio teenager who's shooting for the stars and sharing how high achievement is a family tradition. We'll have her story next. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Sure, you'll teach her to drive a car. Then use Greenlight and teach her to save up for her own car. Mowing lawns and getting paid. Navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. Get what you're worth at worthy.com. A better banking app is right at your fingertips. Download Dave 
and you can get up to $500 instantly right through your phone. There's no interest, no credit checks, and no late fees. Because getting help shouldn't set you back. Ditch the big banks and trust the bear to get up to $500 instantly. Download the Dave app now or go to Dave.com today. At Rulala. Feel like a million bucks without paying the price. Seize the deals on top names like Valentina, Vince, and more before they're gone. And Rula La every day to score up to 70% off iconic brands. Shop RulaLaw.com today. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. The why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, Saturday nights at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. At just 18 years old, this young scholar defied expectations. She walked across not one, but two graduation stages in the same year. Katie Usin with Scripps News Cleveland discovered what it took for this grad to achieve academic excellence. So this is actually my first summer off since the seventh grade. I've been taking college summer courses since seventh grade, so we are planning to go to Disney. A well-deserved celebration and break for Amber Monet Bennett. She just turned 18, just days after earning both her high school and college diplomas. It really took a lot of focus and passion. Amber graduated this spring from Notre Dame College in Cleveland with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, while simultaneously earning her high school diploma online from Ohio Connections Academy. But wait, there's more. I want to be a licensed professional clinical counselor. So for me, my educational career isn't done yet. I want to go to Ursuline College for their master's program in counseling and art therapy. She plans to start classes in the fall and will be a licensed professional clinical counselor by the time she's 21. My very first college course was a drawing one course. And how old were you? I was 12 years old. And you said your classmates were like... They, they couldn't believe it. They're like, how are you in this class? How'd she do it? Through College Credit Plus, Ohio's dual enrollment program that allows students in grades 7 through 12 to earn high school and college credits at the same time. Students can take courses at any public Ohio college or university, as well as some private institutions. And it's free to most Ohio students taking classes at a public college. The College Credit Plus program really requires someone to kind of say, I've, I've got the energy to embrace this opportunity. Dr. J. Michael Presimone is the president of Notre Dame College. He says they have several hundred College Credit Plus students in more than a dozen partner schools. He says every student's journey is different, and Amber is an inspiring ambassador for the power of education. And it should be an important part of all of our lives. We should never stop learning. Congratulations, Anita! High achievement runs in the Bennett family. Last month, we told you about Amber's little sister, Anita, graduating from Tri-C with her Associate of Science degree at 14. Last year, Amber's older sister, Angel, graduated waited with her bachelor's at 19. And look out world, baby sister Ashley just graduated kindergarten. I'm blessed and I'm proud. Proud parents Jeff and Angie Bennett say not only has College Credit Plus saved them a lot of money, but also saved their girls time in achieving their educational careers. They encourage other parents to learn about the options available to them. We've provided a foundation for our kids to achieve academic, academically, spiritually, and socially. And I think as parents, that's what you set out to achieve for your kids, but they've done the hard work. Amber credits her parents for their support and thanks God for the opportunities she's had. She says she just wants to help people, which she'll do through her work in counseling and by the trail she's blazing to get there. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. And as long as you stay focused and you're determined, there's, there's really nothing that you can't do. Just dream big, shoot for the stars, because you can do anything. In Cleveland, I'm Katie Houston reporting. A favorite childhood toy is making quite the big splash. Take a look. These nearly 60-foot inflatable yellow ducks have been capturing a whole lot of attention in Hong Kong's Victoria Harbor. They're part of a pop art project aimed at bringing joy to the city after COVID lockdowns. Very cool. 
we just learned the DOJ has unsealed the federal indictment of former President Trump. We are reviewing the document by the very latest in your next hour of Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, and we are back after this.